On today's video, I want to look at five players that I think are going to flourish, that Raheem Morris is now the head coach. Because we see some guys see a increase in their role depending on what the new head coach's scheme is offensively or defensively. And some guys see a decrease in their role. So here are five guys that I think are going to really flourish with Raheem Morris calling the shots. Let's start with outside linebacker Arnold Ebikati, the second round pick out of Penn State. He showed a good boost in production from year one to year two. But I do believe that with Jimmy Lake and Raheem Morris coming to Atlanta and running a true 3-4 defense because they went from Pease to Nielsen now to Lake, like three consecutive years of brand new defensive coordinators, some stability for starters will likely help Ebikati. But also running a true 3-4 defense, which the Falcons did last year, but every once in a while we saw Nielsen add a... Uh, 4-3 wrinkle in a little bit. He was much more of a, of a hybrid front, if you will. And Evacati still put up really good numbers last year. For it being his second year, six sacks, three tackles for loss, two forced fumbles. Like There was some promising play from the former Penn State Nittany Lion. But what I really noticed was when you look at his pass rushing snaps, which is opportunities where the edge rusher had to go get after the quarterback and they weren't on the field for a run play, 175 snaps in 2023. This is from Pro Football Focus. 303 in 2022. So nearly sawed off in half. Despite that, a huge jump in production in sacks. And I think now that he's in a 3-4 full committed defense, we're going to see Arnold Ebikati have his role and overall production really increase. Now, what does that look like? I'm not sure if that means like, 13, 14 sacks, right? That would be top five in the NFL pretty much. But if you can encroach to nine, maybe even 10 sacks, that'd be a huge sigh of relief for the Falcons front office. So keep an eye on Arnold. But should the Falcons add another edge rusher? I want your opinion really quickly. Give me a yes, give me a no. I still think there is room to add another pass rusher in this locker room. Next guy is linebacker Caden Ellis. Now, this one might come as a little bit of a surprise, but hear me out, because I do think Caden Ellis can maybe get back to a little bit of what he did his final year in New Orleans, where he went off for seven sacks in the contract year as kind of an off-ball linebacker. But I am basing this off of the Rams' 2023 defense, which Raheem Morris was the defensive coordinator for. And last year, L.A. blitzed 24% of the time. That was good for 16th in the NFL right in the middle. The Atlanta Falcons, for reference, were right behind the Rams. But when you think about blitzing, defensive coordinators don't have to blitz if they can get pressure from their front four. And when you've got a guy like Aaron Donald, you can probably bank on him getting enough pressure where you don't need to send linebackers to generate pressure to the quarterback. However, Raheem Morris is a smart dude, and I'm sure he's going to realize he does not have Aaron Donald anymore. No offense to Grady Jarrett or David Onyemata, but Aaron Donald is in a tier of his own, which means if you don't have a whole bunch of horses coming off the edge and you're kind of working off a committee pass rushing rotation and you don't have that clear-cut number one alpha dog, you may want to dip into your linebackers to start blitzing more. And that's where Caden Ellis could see a jump in his production and role on this defense because he has no problem getting after the quarterback. Look at what he did in 2022 when he was on the Saints. Seven sacks. Last year with the Falcons, a little bit of a regression, four sacks. But, I mean, I think that's just a big part of what his role was for the Falcons is they didn't ask on him to get into the backfield as much as maybe New Orleans did. So I think you can expect to see Caden Ellis's blitzes overall pick up, especially if Raheem Morris is knowing that he doesn't have, like, a dominant number one pass rusher coming off the edge that can just get to the quarterback in a clutch moment. If he feels the need to dial up some pressure, Caden Ellis is probably going to be a guy he sends to the offense. Because like I said, the Falcons front five, I think there's a lot more optimism inside of Flowery Branch than maybe outside about this unit altogether and their ability to generate uh, p penetration and overall pressure on the quarterback. But when a push comes to shove and they need a big stop and they want to send someone on a blitz, Ellis is your man. So that's why Caden Ellis, in my eyes, is someone that could benefit from Raheem Morris coming to town because if he wants to blitz more, that's his man. 
Now, before we look at the rest of the players that could receive a big boost in their role, I do want to tell everyone watching about all of our favorite sponsor, Prize Picks. That's right, baby. Daily Fantasy Made Easy, where all you've got to do is pick two to six players and then choose more or less on their projected stats. And you can win big money. I'm talking like turning $10 into $1,000 plus. So with prize picks, they have all these great deals that they run throughout the week. And in fact, they like to just give out freebies, essentially. So if you notice that for Caitlin Clark's uh, WNBA debut, as long as she scores one point, you're halfway home to getting your selections correct. So for example, if you just do two player selections, include Caitlin Clark, You've already got that one pretty much done because uh, I've got a good feeling she'll get over half a point. Then you get one more, and you are two for two, and you are home free. So download Prize Picks today and use code CLNS for a first time deposit match up to a hundred dollars. I put that link in the comments and description of today's video. But download the app today and use code CLNS for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars. Third player I think could flourish with Raheem Morris in charge now is tight end Kyle Pitts. Now, there's no denying that like Arthur Smith wanted Kyle Pitts to succeed. It wasn't like that was a player he inherited. He was a big part of that being the fifth overall pick for the Atlanta Falcons. At this point, I'm just trying to speak it into existence. I just want to see it work. For Falcons fans' sake and for the Atlanta Falcons organization, it's best for everyone if Kyle Pitts and the Falcons can figure out a way to get his immensely oversaturated amount of talent onto the field. Now, one way I think we could see Raheem Morris boost Kyle Pitts up that the previous regime did not, in the red zone. In Kyle Pitts' career, three years, 24 red zone targets, 10 receptions, four touchdowns. In one year, with Puka Nakua and the Rams, and keep in mind, a lot of this coaching staff comes over from L.A., but just stick with me here. In one season, Puka Nakua had 16 targets, 9 receptions, 3 touchdowns. Through three years, Kyle Pitts has 10 grabs in the red zone. Puka Nakua in one year had 9 grabs. Now, is Puka Nakua some major red zone threat? He's got good size. He's not like 5'10 or anything like that. But I think this is just a sign of the Rams like to go to their star players when they get close to the end zone. And for whatever reason, that is not what Arthur Smith did last year with Kyle Pitts and B. John Robinson. And he had to have, I think, maybe like a behind-the-door uh, bit of a lashing from his boss. So hopefully, Raheem Morris will learn what he and Sean McVay did so well, which is when we get to the red zone, don't get cute with it. Go to your best players, like Puka Nakua last year. Nine grabs. Kyle Pitts in three years, just 10 grabs in the red zone. Hopefully that is something that we see this Zach Robinson-led offense adapt and bring over from the City of Angels, which is gets to the red zone, go to your stars like Kyle Pitts. So will we finally have that true, undoubted Kyle Pitts breakout season? Give me a one for yes or give me a two for no. Every year I'm hopeful. Um, and there are a lot of reasons as to why Kyle Pitts just hasn't quite lived up to the expectations of being the fourth overall pick. I don't think anyone's going to deny that. But hopefully this is the year. Fourth guy I think could flourish under Raheem Morris is a newbie. It is wide receiver Darnell Mooney. Allow me to explain. So first off, whenever a player signs a three-year, $39 million size contract, there is some level of say coming in from the head coach. And Raheem Morris said in his introductory press conference, he wanted to work side-by-side side with the GM, like Les Snead and Sean McVay did in L.A. So clearly this was a signing that Raheem Morris had some say and some part in. Now, Mooney is coming off, unfortunately, a career-low year for the Bears. 414 yards, 31 grabs. But when you give a guy $39 million over three years, you are expecting them to have a good role in your offense or defense, which means... I fully expect Darnell Mooney to get his targets. Like This is a player that's coming down to Atlanta because the Falcons have a specific vision for him, and they are going to want to force-feed him the football. 
And maybe at times it could be a bit nauseating because you've got other guys to go to. But I expect Darnell Mooney to have plays drawn up where the goal is to get the ball to number 11. Like, not to the level of what other star wide receivers receive, but he's going to have a good size role. But if that's not enough to convince you, I did some digging. And I think you guys might get a kick out of some of the advanced stats that I was able to find. So what I did was I went back to 2021. That was Darnell Mooney's best year in his four seasons with Chicago. And I looked at intermediate receiving yards. Intermediate receiving yards is from 10 to 19 yards, right? Long is 20 plus, short is 0 to 9, and then there's behind the line of scrimmage. So we're talking 10 to 19 yards. Darnell Mooney finished ninth in the NFL in intermediate receiving yards in 2021, ahead of guys like Tyreek Hill and Jamar Chase. So that is somewhere where Darnell Mooney makes his money. That is his go-to comfort spot. Maybe not the super-duper deep long ball like Justin Jefferson and Cooper Cup. Intermediate zone, Darnell Mooney flourishes. Now, what do you know? Kirk Cousins, the last time he played a full season, 2022. Intermediate passing, number three in the NFL. And what's most impressive is he's not third in intermediate passing because that's all he threw, 15-yard passes. In fact, he did very little of it. Only 10, not even 10% of his pass attempts in 2022 were intermediate passes, okay? Compare that to guys below and above him who, sure, some had more yards, but some had way more cracks at it, like Josh Allen and Russell Wilson. Like Kirk Cousins loved the intermediate pass. Darnell Mooney, really good at the intermediate reception. Can you see the connection starting to form? And then my fifth and final flourish candidate is offensive tackle, left tackle specifically, Jake Matthews. Why does Jake Matthews flourish with a new head coach when Jake Matthews is a lunch pail guy that's going to kick ass no matter who's on the sideline? Because I think Jake Matthews may have a slight preference in what he's asked to do as an offensive tackle. You can look over the last four years in his PFF grades. He is a much better pass blocker than run blocker. What did Arthur Smith like to do? run the football. What was Jake Matthews maybe slight weakness? Run blocking. As you get up in age, it's a little bit tougher for your tackles to get to the second level, to track down some of those fast linebackers. Meanwhile, what is the Atlanta Falcons new offense going to look like with Robinson and Raheem Morris? I mean, if we just go off of history, pass attempts. Last year, the Rams finished 14th. In 2022, when Kirk Cousins played the entire season, they finished third. Falcons last year were 25th in pass attempts. So Jake Matthews, a much better pass blocker than run blocker, is about to join an offense that is much more pass happy than they were previously under Arthur Smith. So I think we're going to see a boost from Matthews because of what this new offense could look like. All right, that will do it for us on today's show. I do want to get your voice in, though, on the comment section side of things. Who do you think the biggest winner is from the Raheem Morris hire? Which guy is praying to the high heavens? Because Raheem Morris is now his head coach. For me, I'd probably say like Terry Fontenot. Uh, if it was Bill Belichick, Terry Fontenot would, uh, would probably be locked in a small closet on NFL draft day. Like That seems like Belichick uh, going, oh, I didn't know that there was a lock on this. My bad, dude. Uh, we'll let you out on Sunday when it's all over. So biggest winner, probably Terry Fontenot. But that will do it for us on this edition of Falcons today. Thank you so much for tuning in. Really, really appreciate it. If you're not subscribed to the channel yet, I invite you to do so. If you liked our video and you're still watching, hit the thumbs up button as well.